In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the different ways we can go about loading samples into sample one. Now, the first method that we can use is to simply load the samples from the browser and we can drag the audio file to the waveform display here or to the sample list. So if I just go ahead and move that to the side, open up our browser, come to a sample, this snare here, I can drag that to the waveform display or the samples list here and then just drop that and we've got that loaded into sample one. Now, now that I have that first sample loaded, just keep in mind that if I were to come to a second sample and then drag this to the waveform display, it will replace the original sample. If I would like to load something in addition to the one that we have, then I can just click hold and drag that to the sample list. So now we have both of these loaded, we can select them by clicking once to edit. Now we can also load samples from a finder or explorer window. So if I go ahead and bring up this explorer window with some samples, I can just click hold and then drag that to our sample list and we've got that loaded. Another option that we have for loading samples into sample one is we can actually pull an audio event from the arrange view. So here I've got a kick on this track. I could just simply click hold and drag that into our sample list and that's now loaded. Now here on this other track, I have a drum loop. So I could just select a portion here and then grab that and add it to the sample list as well. Studio One's gonna bounce that down as a separate audio file and it's then loaded here. At any point we would like to remove a sample, we would just right click and remove the sample. If we have multiple loaded that we'd like to remove, we could just right click and choose to remove all. Then we have a warning saying you'll lose your data, but if that's what we want, just click continue. And I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in another sample here, just to show you that by default, Sample one is going to set the root note for any sample you bring in to C3. Each, even if you bring in additional ones, they're all gonna be set to C3. And the low, it will be on C minus two and the high G8. So each sample that you have within the sample list is going to be triggered along that range and each one, the root note will be set to C3. Now, if you're new to sampling, the root note simply means this is the key that or middle C on your keyboard, when you press that key, the sample will play back in its original pitch and it won't be pitched up or down or sped up or slowed down depending on where you're playing. The C3 is going to give you that original sample at its, at its original pitch. Now, if you'd like to change the root note for any sample, just be sure that you have it highlighted that you can click and then manually enter in a value there, or you can just press the key that you'd like to, it to be assigned to on your MIDI controller, and then that will populate by itself. We can also just click hold and drag up or down to change that. And that applies to the low and high as well. And we can also accomplish this within the mapping area, and we're gonna take a look at that in a future video. Now there's one other way that we can actually add samples that I forgot to mention, and that's by clicking on this plus symbol here and then we can come to our samples. We can highlight and then even audition by clicking the play here within the Explorer window. I'm just gonna go ahead and click open. That's been added. And if you notice, we can see our sample names here, the kick, and then also in this display up above. And then to the right of that, we have previous and next arrows. So I pulled this kick from the Explorer window and you can see, um, where is it? Okay, so maybe I didn't pull it from that folder. Let's just go ahead to the plus symbol and then I'll choose this very first chant, open that up. We've got that here, we can see the name here. Then if I click the next arrow, we should move to the next sample within that explorer. So we've got Hendrix Choir Practice, if I open up the Explorer window. Hendrix Choir is the next one. And we can see that that moved on. I'll click next. We've got Snare Wiggle, which is here. So you can see you can quickly access different samples within a folder that you've pulled from by using the previous and next arrows.
Now I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose to remove all because sample one has a feature that will allow us to slice up any rhythmic material that we bring in. So if I come to a drum loop here, say take number six, I will hold down shift, then click hold and drag that into sample one. You can see it says slice and add sample, I'll release, and we can see that this sample has been sliced up automatically. And so the first slice is going to go on C1 and each additional slice will receive its own root note and its playback will be restricted to that root note uh, on up the keyboard chromatically. So if I go ahead and scroll up to the top and select this first slice, we can see that that starts on C1 as the root note and its low and high is respect restricted to C1. And then as I move to the next, we can see C sharp one, C sharp one, low and high are restricted to that root note, and so on. So then you can just trigger these chromatically up your keyboard beginning on C1. And of course, if you would like to adjust the start and end playback of any of the samples, you would just select that particular one. Then you can use these triangles down at the bottom to fix any issues that you may have with where the slices were automatically placed. And I'm going to right click and remove all, continue, and then let's just bring in actually another drum loop here. I'll bring in three and just place that there just to so that, show you that if you would like to add slices to a sample that you've already brought in, you can always right click on that and then choose to create slice. And then we can see, I'll scroll up, select this first one. And this actually starts on C3 because that's what sample one set the default root to when we initially brought it in. And I'm just gonna right click and remove all again. And a couple minor things that I wanna mention to finish out here is that the manual, the Studio One manual does not list specifically the file types that are compatible within sample one, but I have tried AIF, MP3, and WAVE, and they've all worked without a problem. Keep in mind that I am using the professional version of Studio One, so if you are using the artist or the free version, I think you would need to purchase the MP3 add-on in order for those to work. And then finally, if you notice here, we have this display where it says zero bytes. This is actually going to give you kind of a running tally of the amount of samples that you have loaded in megabytes. You can see that as I continue to add these to the sample list, that increases. So you can kind of get a running idea of how much your memory is being uh, utilized uh, or how much space these samples are actually taking within sample one. And again, we can load up to 96 samples within sample one. Okay, and we'll wrap up here in the next video. We're going to cover the wave tab and all the different parameters that are available to us here. Thanks for watching.